Hey YouTube followers, uh, it's been a while since I put a video up here. We've been farming, trying to get our beans planted, sprayed, and uh, but we're taking advantage of this cooler morning now. It's been almost 100 degrees every day and 85 first thing in the morning. But this morning uh, we had a couple of tents of rain overnight, not enough to do anything for the crops, but uh, it did cool things off, and we're gonna take advantage of it and we got a bunch of the sheep and goats up I got them up last night that well they started getting lambing first of May and you know the parasites are gonna be worse on them soon after they kid and so we're taking this opportunity and all we're doing is running through there checking their eyelids looking at their body condition and warming the ones that we feel like need it. Now, uh, I'll show you as we're warming them in there. We're using three different warmers and three different drench guns. And then you can set your drench guns in such a way that maybe the, the sheep get one pull or th three pulls in the, a particular drug and the nannies might get four pulls or two pulls of that same gun, you see. So you can worm different species uh, at the same time. So it's real noisy in there just because all oh, some of the lambs and the the ewes uh, got separated and the kids and such. So I'll just probably show that to you. I won't be able to say anything. If I did, you couldn't hear me. But uh, I'll put up a link to the combination wormer. I've done that before but if you're new here and that's what we're doing and I, I really can't tell you how we set our guns. You just really need to figure that out. I'll, I'll put a link to the chart and the weight but if I told you for your animals it might be different weights um, different times of the year you're doing it. So you just you really just need to figure that out but go off the chart that's in, I have a link in the descriptions and use three different drench guns. We're using valves and Sidectin and Prohibit and set them accordingly so that you can, you can worm sheep or you can worm goats or you can worm both or you can worm ewes and lambs, uh, however, uh, your operation and, and however you got you got them up there if you just have sheep you can worm the, the ewes and the lambs if they need it don't worm anything that doesn't need it uh, you'll run into resistance a lot faster in your wormers so uh, uh, be sure to check the description and find those links there for the combination of wormers So Quinn's handling three drench guns. You can hear that. We got them hanging from a cable that's above the chute that they'll slide. One of the hoses got pulled off of the gun. That's a danger of having those things hanging down there.
So this is the first time we start taking inventory of how many sheep and goats, kids and lambs we got out there, um, how kidding might have went. And I'll tell you, if you're kidding on pasture, you might be disappointed. I, I usually am. Uh, it's just the way it goes. But if you got big herds on pasture, you're not going to run, you know, 200% kid crop or lamb crop. So just be prepared for that. Probably not even 150, you, you know. If you end up with 100%, you're going to be doing well. If you get them all to the sale barn. Well, we finished them up just after lunch there. Uh, I don't know, maybe it's 1 o'clock. And... Uh, Move the dog food feeders out here. And they're on this uh, little five acre paddock here. Um, actually these same, these same does and lambs were on there. We were, uh, we had them on there before they, they kitted and lambed. Probably back in uh, March. So we've turned them back out here now and there's plenty growed up and they got plenty to eat. Looks like it's going to be a nice evening, still nice and cool out. And we'll probably be, uh, we got a little wheat to cut, we'll probably be on the combine here for a few days. So, uh, hey, good to see y'all again. Take care.